And we are rolling right along here in episode 191 of Catfish on Ice with your host, Chad Minton, as we continue to travel through the barren wasteland of the NHL offseason. The draft is in the rearview mirror. Early first day of NHL free agency is behind us. All the major signings have passed, but there are still some big time free agents still hanging around. And we are rolling along here in episode 191 because we have a few more things to get get to. First off, thanks so much to the Sticks on the Six podcast for joining us at the beginning of this episode to give us the lowdown on two big free agency signings by the Nashville Predators in Ryan O'Reilly and Luke Shin. Got some good insight on those two former Maple Leafs players and what they're going to bring to the Predators. We talked about uh, some other things as well. It's on our YouTube channel right now that you can go watch that video if you are a YouTube subscriber and viewer of this current video. If you're listening on the podcast, thank you so much for sticking with us here in episode 191 with your host, Chad Minton. Here's what we got for you to round out episode 191. The Predators, again, have shown us that they're not done signing players. We got to talk about Denis Garyanov has been signed by the Predators. We're about to dive into that. That just got announced a couple hours ago before this recording. So I got to break that down, what that means for the lineup. It's suddenly a really crowded locker room here with a bunch of veterans. I know Garyanov is a young player still, 26 years old, but it's just another player to add competition to the locker room. Preds training camp is going to be a crazy roller coaster ride to see who ends up where in the lineup. So, yeah, we got to break that down a little bit. Want to talk about the fallout of the Matt Duchesne buyout. And he's always been such a polarizing player. A lot of fans didn't like him, not because he's a bad dude, but because of the contract, which I always defended him and said it's not his fault that front office signed him for that deal. Not his fault, but he did not ever live up to that, obviously. But now he plays for the Dallas Stars. There's some sour grapes out there for the Predators fans to see him play for a division rival, a team that's probably going to inch him a little bit closer to that coveted first Stanley Cup as a player. And he's in a much better situation, I think, as far as uh, teams that are closer to the Stanley Cup, obviously than what the Predators are. So we got to break that down. Threw out a tweet that blew up on Twitter. Did not see it coming. A lot of people responded to it. Got some pushback on it. I was pretty angry when I saw the comments from Matt Duchesne. And then context came out. And got to talk about that. Also, he put out a really thoughtful and really well-worded Instagram post that we'll share as well. Also, something else I came across on Twitter recently in this uh, barren wasteland of the hockey Twitter landscape right now as we're in this dead part of the offseason. Players are taking their time off as they've earned. You know, you see all this NHL Summer League talk here like the NBA does. No way. That is not possible. Maybe you let the prospects play in a They already do that, basically, when training camp starts. You get the prospect showcase. Just don't think it's a good idea to ask these guys to play even more hockey. Such a a brutal sport, physically tolling sport. Can't expect them to do some type of a summer league right now. That just is not possible. As much as we miss hockey right now, that's not possible. So, yeah, we're in that part of the offseason where we miss hockey a lot, but... With that said, there's some still some good stuff out there. So, saw a really good tweet from from a Twitter poster by the name of Mike Bartner. Calls himself a hockey content creator on Twitter. Put out a really good list that I got to break down of the most desirable NHL teams right now for a free agent to sign with in the next four to six years. Really thoughtful list. Really good list. Going to share that and give my opinions on that as well. That's how we're going to 
break down the rest of episode 191 here. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for watching this part of episode 191 on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button below if you could. Hit a comment down there and let us know how we're doing. We appreciate you always watching and commenting, and the, the subscribes really help out a ton as well. All right, so Dennis Garyanov is now been signed by the Predators for an $850,000 Deal for one year. Seems pretty minor, doesn't it? And on the surface, it is a pretty minor deal. But you know what? I think it's just another inclination here that Barry Trotz is not willing to just sit around and wait for the process to play out in terms of letting a rebuild and letting the young core develop and maybe treat 2023-24 like a trial and error type of season, maybe miss the playoffs, maybe let the growing pains develop, and really start prepping for three to four years down the road to be a Stanley Cup contender. Barry Trotz has made it very clear and that he's not going to do that, and he's made that even more clear with another signing. Younger player, not a 30-plus-year-old player, so that's, that's good, at least. But Dennis Garyanov didn't see this coming necessarily here, but I haven't seen anything that Barry Trotz has done this offseason really coming. This guy just keeps on... He's just keeping us on the edge of uh, edge of our seats with what he's going to do next as, as a first-year NHL general manager. I mean, first head coach of this franchise, and he keeps us on the edge of our seats not knowing what he's going to do next. He's taking... The whole NHL by notice here with what he's doing. And so let's break down this. Uh, let's break down this contract signing here. We'll throw it on the screen here. $850,000 deal, one year. And really what this tells me is that this team is actually has no excuses to not compete for the playoffs all of a sudden. With adding all of these veterans through free agency, which – wasn't entirely sure that was what was going to happen this offseason, but that's turned out to be what the case here. So you get Dennis Garyanov, who is the former Dallas star and also played a bit with the Montreal Canadiens this past season. Had a little bit of a down season, but he's still such a young player. Once put up a five-point game in the playoffs for the Dallas Stars. Um uh, in the bubble against the Calgary Flames. Uh, four goals and an assist in that game six against the Calgary Flames, if you remember that. Really young, great talent. This guy has a great motor. He's got a really high upside, so very much different than the other free agency signings that the Predators have had so far this offseason. Garyanov is basically, Trotz is taking a flyer out on Garyanov for a one-year deal. For very minimum, 850k. That's nothing. Drop in the pan with the cap space that the Predators have had and still have now. So you look at this, and I think it's a risk worth taking. Obviously, I don't think it's a very high risk. It's going to add more competition to training camp. You got to think that Garyanov's definitely going to be in the starting lineup on opening night. But just reading the tea leaves here. The first player I think about is Philip Tomasino. What does this mean for Philip Tomasino's spot in the lineup? Because before the Garyanov signing today, I thought for sure that Tomasino was at least going to start the year off in the starting lineup somewhere. Wasn't sure where necessarily, but I thought he'd he'd have a spot on one of the wings in the depth chart. But now... Starting to feel like he's going to start the season off with the Milwaukee Admirals. Maybe he gets a spot on the fourth line. Not sure. It's kind of weird. That's the first player I think about after this um, Dennis Garyanov signing here for a very minimal deal, a good find. I kind of compare it to back in the good old days when you'd go to Walmart and dig through the DVD bin and he and he climbed to the very bottom of this discount DVD bin and you try to find yourself a gym. Perhaps that's what Garyanov can be for the Predators here. I think it's a really good signing. But again, I'm wondering where is Philip Tomasino going to fit after this? 
because he is entering the final year of his entry level contract. So it feels like a prove it year for Philip Tomasino with the National Predators here. And how many opportunities is he going to get? He got caught up late last season and played pretty well. Actually increased his point per game average this past season compared to his rookie season where he played over 70 games. So I don't know what's going on with Tomasino and his future outlook with the Predators. Maybe he ends up being a trade piece eventually at the trade deadline, depending on where the Predators are at in 2024. When that time comes, I don't know. But it's just weird that Trotz keeps adding all these veterans to the lineup, even though Garyanov is still a very young player at 26. He keeps adding all these players to their locker room, and it's creating more competition for the youth. I do think that you have your your young part of your core that's very safe, and they're not going anywhere. They're going to be in the lineup even after the Garyanov signing. That's obviously Cody Glass. That's obviously Tommy Novak. Yuso Parsonen feels safe. And Luke Evangelista is a dead set ringer to start with the Predators in the starting lineup this coming up season. So then that kind of makes me zero in on Philip Tomasino. Are you going to play him on the fourth line, really? Or and get minimal ice time? Or are you going to start him back in Milwaukee again and see if he can really take off this time? And then... Injuries can happen, things can happen, poor play can happen, and then you call him up, you give him a chance, you see how the team's responding and playing in the standings, obviously. And then you would think that even if he starts the season in Milwaukee, Tomasino will get another call-up to the NHL at some point next season, and then he's really got to prove it. That's really what I get out of this Denis Garyanov edition here that's happened today as the Predators make even more signings And just really make us wonder what is Trotz's motives here? Well, it seems it's starting to be pretty crystal clear that he he expects his team to make the playoffs again. And he wants to take on the role of what a Florida Panthers team did this past postseason, where even if this team is a bubble playoff team, once again, let's just get in the playoffs and let's let's try to ride a hot UC Soros again. Let's see if if changing the culture of the locker room can translate to postseason success. That's got to be the thinking right now because you have really changed the whole dynamic of this team. It's going to be a completely different looking team for 2023-24 for the National Predators. We're going to see a lot of the same young players that played down the stretch, but man, the veteran core of this team has been completely altered if you go back to the trade deadline in March to this point now. So just four months of just a four month time span. This t- this roster has done a complete overhaul and shift. So how does that translate to playoff success? If this team can make it to the playoffs, that's what we have to ask ourselves. That's what we really have to ask ourselves. Gary Onov's a nice addition for 850K. Why not take a flyer on him? Why not? The guy plays. I love his upside. I really love the upside of Gary Onov. He had three seasons in a row where he hovered around a 30-point season with Dallas. He, I mean, he's a... He's coming from the Montreal Canadiens, but he played for Dallas for most of his season. 12th overall pick in 2015 by Dallas. And let's look at this. This is what really stands out to me, and this is why I say Gary Onov has a high upside, and this is a bargain addition for the Predators that can end up really being a home run. This is what this. This is what I love about this, is you have home run potential for a very low-risk um, proposition for one year. Let's see what happens. Let's see what he can do for us for for this one season. But you look at his playoff performance. He's only been in the playoffs. He's played 32 games in his playoff career. 2019-20, what I just referenced, when he had that five-point game against Calgary, the season in the bubble with the COVID and in Edmonton, the Stars went to the Stanley Cup final that year and lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning. 
Gary Onoff played 27 games in that playoff in that playoff run for the Dallas Stars. Nine goals, eight assists. Obviously, was a little bit bloated by that one game where he had five points, but still, 17 points in those 27 playoff games, 54 shots on goal. So the guy was aggressive. 96 hits in that playoff run in those 27 games. The guy plays a physical edge to him. And again, 26 years old. This can end up being a really great home run pickup for the Predators for a very, very cheap deal to see what he can do. So I love it. I love the competition. But again, it makes me really wonder what is going to happen with Philip Tomasino. So there's that. Another addition for the Predators in free agency. Dennis Garyanov, one year, $850,000 deal. There you have it with that. Let's move along here in episode 191 of Catfish on Ice, brought to you by DraftKings promo code THPN and part of the Hockey Podcast Network with your host, Chad Minton. Going to share, we're going to move on now to the fallout of Matt Duchesne being bought out. And first things first, I want to share his Instagram post here before we get to what really got people a little upset about some of his comments he made to the Dallas Stars media. And I'll even admit that I got a little peeved about what he said, but context does matter. And I am always willing to take a step back and think about things. But here it is on the screen here for our YouTube viewers. Also, if you're listening on the podcast, I'm going to read it. This was an, Instagram post from Matt Duchesne on his on his IG, uh, basically bidding farewell to Nashville. He says, Nashville, I don't even know where to start. Just thank you. It was the experience of a lifetime being a pred, and I can't thank my teammates, the fans, the staff, just everyone enough for everything. We created bonds and relationships that will last a lifetime, and Nashville will always be our home. I could easily keep going for paragraphs here. But I'll leave it at that. Just thank you, and we love you. God works in mysterious ways, and the greater plan is always one that keeps you guessing and on your toes. My family and I couldn't be more grateful to be joining the Dallas Stars. We are so excited for this next chapter. Awesome. Very very well written, very well said. And um, look, no one has ever, ever questioned how great of a – person Matt Duchesne is how and how much he wanted to play in Nashville and how much he wanted to win in Nashville but the comments that got everyone in a stir got me in a stir when I first read them and it was a soundbite but still kind of was salt in the wound and it didn't help that he's going to the Dallas Stars was basically saying I can't wait for the opportunity to win I haven't had that many opportunities in my career That got me a little, when I first read that, it got me upset. It did. Because he has had opportunities. And he hasn't stepped up in some of those opportunities. Now, uh, some people pushed back on me and said, well, he wasn't referring to that in the interview. It was just about winning. He's never been past the second round. I get all that. And it makes sense now in context. It still did not sit with me right when I saw it. But now, taking a step back, letting things process... The buyout situation totally shook me. It did. It came out of nowhere. Like it, I did not see it coming. I saw him as the elder statesman of the locker room. And I, I really actually appreciated what he did this past season through all the adversity and through all the injuries and having to call all these young players up. And and the team comes three points short of tying the Jets in the standings to try to make the playoffs. All of these things happen. Duchesne ends up having that really, really bizarre, ugly injury where he almost lost a finger. So he ends up not finishing the season either, but he played a good chunk of that season after all the other players had been traded away and more injuries were piling up. Philip Forsberg was out of the lineup since February. All these things happened. And Duchesne, for the most part, was sticking around, put up a 56-point season, was trying to do what he could. The biggest thing with Duchesne was 
for the most part, he did not play up to his desired level in the playoffs. He had that one game-winning goal in double overtime to beat the Hurricanes. But other than that, he was pretty much invisible in the playoffs for the Predators in his time he got. Not even a point-per-game player in, in his playoff time with the Predators. So I think just the comments rubbed me the wrong way. It rubbed others the wrong way. I put the tweet out really fresh when I read the soundbite. And context does matter. And you know, Robbie Stanley of 102.5 The Game came out and responded to the tweet and basically set the context right and said that it was just, you know, it was just being taken out of proportion. He didn't mean it that way and, and all these other things. So I have taken a step back and realized what he was saying. It still came off the wrong way to me, but in the end, we all move on here. He was the one that was bought out. He wasn't the one that forced his way out of Nashville. So it's a very different situation than a player who demanded a trade and wanted out and wanted wanted out really badly. That's not what happened with Matt Duchesne. So we can move on here. It sucks seeing him play for the Dallas Stars, especially for three million a year when we were paying him eight million a year and we're still going to get dead cat money out of it. But it is what it is. It's a business ultimately. And I do wish him the best. And it was a really, really thoughtful and nice gesture to put that Instagram post out there about Nashville and about the Preds fans. So I appreciate that from Matt Duchesne. Uh, he, he, we've always known he's a solid guy. We, that's never been a question here. He has rubbed a lot of fan bases the wrong way and a lot of all of his stops he's made in the NHL, including Colorado and Columbus and Ottawa. But now he's going to his fifth NHL team. I wish him nothing the best. I mean, he's going to a really great situation for himself right now. So we'll see what happens with that. And now we get a Dallas star, not on the same level, but we get Dennis Karyanov. So it's going to be some fun back and forth between Preds and Stars fans as we get one of their former players. They get one of our former players, actually two of our former players, because they also have Craig Smith now on that team. So, Wish you the best, Matt Duchesne, for sure. No hard feelings at all. Finally, want to share a really good list that I came across on Twitter. And we're going to put it on the screen right now. This is going to round out episode 191 of Catfish on Ice. It's been an awesome episode with the Sticks on the Six podcast joining us at the beginning on an interview talking about Ryan O'Reilly and Luke Shin joining the Predators of Free Agency. We've broken down the, the, the today's news of Dennis Garyanov joining the Predators, another addition to this roster, more depth for the Fords, and more competition for the young players of this roster, most notably for me, Philip Tomasino. But let's move on here and round out episode 191 with this list I came across on Twitter of the most desirable teams for a free agent to sign four to six years with based on the roster, future, and city. So those are your dynamics there. There's your uh, rules for this list that got compiled. And... The Predators are not on there in the top 10. Shouldn't surprise you too much. This is from Mike Bartner on Twitter, who is a hockey content creator. Really awesome list from him. So appreciate the list that we can dissect and talk about. So yeah, he's got the Devils as number one most desirable teams right now to join for a free agent in the next four to six years based on roster, their future, and the city. Honestly, can't argue with that too much. I mean, the Devils are right there as the next team up to try to win a Stanley Cup, maybe multiple Stanley Cups. So you really can't argue with that. They got the history. They've got the young, solid prospect pool, maybe one of the best prospect pools in the NHL right now. Can't argue with that at all. Dallas Stars come in at number two on, on, on this list. That's where Matt Duchesne's going. I don't know if I'd put them that high. I don't know if I'd put them ahead of some of these other teams I'm about to read off, but there's, they should definitely be in the top 10. 
So you got Dallas Stars. Number three is the Carolina Hurricanes on this list. Colorado Avalanche, number four. Oilers, number five. Sabres, number six. A little surprised to see the Sabres that high. But again, pretty, pretty agreeable list here. I, I can't push back too much on this list. The Rangers at number seven. Panthers, number eight. Maple Leafs, number nine. And the Wild, number 10. I would argue maybe the Kings are more desirable than the Wild, but then you throw out City and you throw out Future and all these things. I think the Kings have a brighter future than the Wild do. But if you look at City, maybe there's guys who don't want to be in L.A. If you look at the fan bases and the market, the, the Minnesota Wild have some of the most diehard hockey fans in the entire world. So I could see arguments to both of that. But where do the Predators fit in all this? So they're not top 10, and I'm not going to push back on all that. I don't think they should be top 10. But are they that undesirable now for future NHL stars, future NHL star free agents going into next offseason and beyond? I think, unfortunately, the Predators have to start building back up that, that desirable feature that they built with that 2017 Cup run. Their window was open for a very short amount of time, and it slammed shut very quickly for a lot of reasons, including the former GM, David Poyle, making some really questionable long-term decisions. So you have that. But I still think the National Predators are a desirable team and a desirable city to play in for future free agents. Just ask Ryan O'Reilly right now. So... Although I don't think the Predators should be top 10 in terms of most desirable teams, I don't think they're too far out of the top 10. I still think they're a desirable team to play for. Here's the problem. For your for your NHL free agents who really desperately want a Stanley Cup and they need to win now, the Predators are not going to be that desirable team for, for a couple years probably, at least. But the Predators do have something going for them, at least for the next two years, in terms of free agents wanting to play here. And that's UC Soros. UC Soros is the type of goaltender that can carry a team to a Stanley Cup if you're in and he gets hot at the right time, like we've seen countless other times in past playoffs. That alone can draw big-time free agents to your market and to your team. So the UC Soros factor plays into the Predators be, still being a desirable team. The city of Nashville and their fans have proven time and time again, just proved it again with the NHL draft hosting it, that it's one of the best fan bases out there. So free agents are not going to have a problem with going and play, playing for the Nashville Predators over the fan base and the lack of fans or whatever. No, that's never going to be a problem. I think the the thing working against Nashville right now in terms of being desirable, as this list puts out there, is it's a work in progress. Got a lot of young players that have to prove themselves in the next couple of years before we can really start thinking about the Predators being a deep playoff type of team. All you got is UC Soros. You're waiting to see if Philip Forsberg can come back ready to go and live up to the contract he got. There's things, there's all these moving parts and fluid situations with the Predators right now that might push, steer away big time free agents from wanting to sign with the Predators. It's going to take a couple years for the Predators to prove it, for this young core to develop more and grow up more and really start producing more and, and, and prove it to all of us that they are um, going to, to develop into everyday top six types of players. That's when this everything will come full circle and the Predators will be a desirable team to play for again. But as of now... They're definitely not top 10. They're maybe close. I would put them in the middle in terms of most desirable teams. But they're definitely, they've lost some of that desire and some of that magic that they built from 2017 into 2018 when they won the President's Trophy. That has definitely cooled off. They are not that desirable market like they were then. It's going to take time. You got a new head coach coming in, Andrew Burnett. He's going to have to build that up again. You got a new GM with Barry Trotz, who is already showing us 
that he is quickly going to try to build this roster back up and flip it. He's flipping it quick. He's not going through the long-term five-year plan here. He's trying to rebuild it quickly, very quickly. He's expediting the process. So this can all change. This whole desirable thing can literally change going into the next offseason. It can change that quick for the National Predators. This next season is really going to either make Barry Trotz look like a like a just magnificent GM first year, just how did he figure this out so quickly, to, wow, Trotz needs some time here. He really went into this too aggressive, bit off more than he could chew. Judging by how that goes, the Predators could, be- could become a very, very desirable team to play for in the 2024 offseason. So that's when the Matt Duchesne buyout money really kicks in, though. So I'm not sure what the cap situation is going to be like for the Predators next offseason. So with that said, looking way ahead, that's how I feel about that list. I don't have a big problem with the list. I don't have a problem with the New Jersey Devils being number one as the most desirable destination for future NHL stars, future NHL free agents. I think that makes sense. Nothing, Nothing I can push back on with that. So... Thank you so much for listening to the rest of episode 191 of Catfish and Ice and watching it right now on our YouTube channel. Please hit subscribe below. This is your host, Chad Minton. We will see you very soon. We have a really, really fun project we're working on right now. For episode 192, we're going to give you some really good off-season content. Get the brain juices flowing here. We're going to do a two-part series in episode 192 and episode 193, a countdown, if you will. We will reveal that at a later date, but until then, we will see you next week for that, to debut that project we're working on. Until then, thank you so much, everybody. Hope you have a great rest of the week. This has been Catfish and Ice Podcast, episode 191, with your host, Chad Minton. Take care, everybody.